Now we are going to make the best trebuchet design that is up to date. It's called a floating arm trebuchet. Remember in the last um, two parts I said that all the energy of the trebuchet is stored inside the counterweight which swings down. So if we want to have more energy put into the projectile there's two things we can do. We can increase the weight of the counterweight but as I said then you won't increase the speed which won't really help. Or you can make the counterweight higher up in the air so it falls a longer distance. But if I were to show you here that I'm just going to take a random object as a counterweight. I'm going to weld the two, the two together. I'm not going to make a real trebuchet. Now remember, uh, if we put the axle over there, the trebuchet uh, counterweight will only lift up about, say that's about a meter. Okay, to make it lift up higher, we can put the axle over here. See, but that'll mean that this little arm will travel much slower than it would have if the axle was over here. So to overcome this problem, some smart bloke, I don't know who it was, in the 1980s invented the floating arm trebuchet, which let us store a lot more power inside the counterweight for how much weight it has and makes the projectile of course go a lot faster. So the principle behind the floating arm trebuchet is that the arm floats. The arm isn't fixed um, isn't on a fixed axle so it moves around as it swings. Um, to determine where the counterweight is going to sit and the counterweight's arm uh, with a little pole that holds the counterweight, so I'll show you now we're first going to make two rails which wheels are going to um, ri slide upon so I'm going to just take solid steel um, they have good rails we'll take two of these and that's going to be the rails that the arm's going to slide on you'll see you'll see what they do now Actually. I'm just going to stack this one. Now put the guide rails at a vertical angle almost in the middle of the thing. You can put it a little bit in front because the arm's not going to swing that far forward. Just put it over here and I'll stack it again. Okay, I'm going to stack this one about minus seven to its right, so you can see those are the guiding rails that go up to there. Now weld those two together and duplicate them. And duplicate put the duplicate on the other side and make sure that the duplicate is exactly in line with the other one I'm going to smart constraint these together so that's everything no collide multi and uh, position it exactly in the middle in the front so it's in the middle so I'm just gonna weld these two and now get two blocks to use as counterweights I'm going to use fridges again do fridges and now don't weld them axis them a bit above the center of gravity so I'm going to axis them about there. Let's put one on this side of the little arm and one on this side. So 
So you can see those are our two counterweights now. And now we will need the axle of the throwing arm. It's not a normal axle. We're going to use wheels. The wheels are going to uh, like ride down the rails. I'm going to go to transportation props and select. I've just taken this wheel. I'm going to put it about there on the arm. Not too much in front because that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the floating arm. So about three fourths. So we'll make it there. And another one. You can use smaller wheels if you like. They'll actually work a bit better probably. But these are fine. And now we lift the arm up, put the little arm or the little pole in between these two sliding things. There. Now let's just change the weight to make the welds much stronger. So for the weight of the counterweights I'm going to take about 11,000 again so you can see the difference. Now change the little arm first because otherwise everything spazzes out. Then change the counterweights. Then make the wheels about 13,000 so they can hold the weight. And make the big arm. Uh, let's, let's make the big arm 900 again. You can see everything's much stiffer now. Now our problem is that you can see this arm bumps into these two rails, which we don't want. So we're going to no collide that arm, like this, like this ball, with these two rails. And then so it can fall down. I'm just going to lift this whole thing up into the air so it can handle it. Just for safety's sake, let's just make the whole frame 50,000. Okay, so it's lifted up into the air, and you can see that the arm now rides on these two sliding slider things. And the counterweights only fall in a vertical angle downwards. What we need now is a little guiding wheel for the arm. So I'm going to take that one. Actually makes it something a bit wider. And just take two big wheels so they help guide the arm and axis the little wheel in between the two big wheels there 